Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to another micro brand review. Quite an unusual little brand called Benarus. Now they have been knocking around for the last 10 years making fairly limited runs of watches. They are based in Germany but their watches are manufactured in Asia to, to help keep the prices down. Now the one I've got today to show you, the Moray 42, a cushion cased, very kind of retro, a little bit of Panerai, bit of 1970s in there as well. Unusual in certain respects, unusual because it's available in a, a vast array of sizes. You can actually get this one from 38 millimeters all the way up to 47 millimeters for the big boys who like big boys. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. So then, does size matter? Before we get into that, let's have a quick look at the Benarus website. And as noted, you can pick up this Moray in four different sizes, 38, 42, 45 and 47, all essentially with the same case shape. Now there are other differences, differences in price apart from anything else. Uh, 38 I believe only comes on a leather strap, not a bracelet. I will leave a link in the description of the video today if you're interested in picking up one of these. So should you be interested in picking up one of these? Well, I do like the watch, however, I suggest you stay tuned for the moans and niggles section today and make up your own mind. You certainly get a very compelling overall package. Proper leather and suede watch roll branded, no cheap PU leather today. This one smells really nice. And contained within, you get one warranty card. You get a pretty good Tropic strap with branded Benarus uh, Buckle there, I'll show you that one later. You also get a nice branded leather strap and you get the watch supplied on the bracelet. So pretty decent package overall for 450 US. In fact, I've just looked at the Benarus website and for the duration of February 2019, they've taken 20% off the price of this and I believe all of their watches. That takes this one down from 449 US dollars to only 364 US dollars. Now that looks like a bit of a bargain, especially when you consider all the extras that you get with it. But really, some extras and a nice bit of packaging is all well and good, but it's all about the watch. And the watch, I think, looks great. So oddly enough, 42 mil in diameter, this one, but are still a relatively svelte 12 and a half mil thick, especially when you look at how domed that sapphire crystal is. I'll show you that one in close up later on. 48 and a half mil lug tip to lug tip and drilled lugs today as well as a bonus. 22 mil lug width, a nice taper on the bracelet, 22 down to 18, back up to 20 at the, the very nicely etched clasp and sized up for me, seven inch wrist, hits that sports watch sweet spot, 155 grams, bang on. So all stainless steel constructions, 316L stainless steel case, crown, bezel, and full stainless steel bracelet as well. And look at that lovely sapphire. Reminds me of my beloved Aura 65, cracking dome there, and as you can see, a little bit of purple, little pop of color from some AR coating on the underside. And I think the finishing on the case is really nice. All brush finish on the sides of the case, you've got a, a radial brush on the top matching the radial brush on that stainless steel bezel, and you've got a straight brush on the lugs and the, the mid link of the bracelet. Nicely integrated actually, matching the, the links on the bracelet with the lugs. You don't often see a bracelet that actually looks like it was designed for the watch. I suspect this one was actually designed for the watch. Quite a thin coin edge rotating bezel, 120 click unidirectional rotating bezel, nice action, locks in place, no back play there, so the bezel is a good one. And plenty of grip, as you can see there from that crown. Also has a nice etched logo, you'll see it in the case back in a minute. Three dolphins in a kind of Celtic whirl, very nice indeed. And the bracelet is a good one as well, kind of reverse oyster links there, but it's got that straight drop. It's got the inverted mid link of the end link, so it sits very, very nicely on wrist indeed, and screw links as well. Nice clasp. Now, same dolphin whirl logo there, just pops out, mill clasp as you'd expect for the cash, and diver's extension. Hold on, I'll just clip this one back in. Diver's extension there, you don't see an awful lot of these. I'm not a massive fan of them myself. I think most people will just leave it closed, but no sharp edges on this one. It's better than the, the previous ones I've seen. Three micro adjusts there, so you always get a good fit. 
Now, zoomed right in on the dial, you can see all that AR popping away. Very simple printed dial. Extra long batons, three different dial choices. There's Arabics, there's another couple as well. I just went for this very simple one. I thought it was nice and clean and legible. Kind of segmented fence post hands, little lollipop second hand. And C3 vintage style old radium loom on this one. So again, that kind of vintage 1970s, 1960s feel. I'll put up the loom shot now. Loom is pretty good. You get that kind of rich green glow from C3 Old Radium, but no loom on the bezel. So we've got a diver's watch, screw down crown, 300 meters of water resistance, and a diver's extension on the bracelet clasp, but you are unlikely to be able to use this one as a countdown timer because it doesn't feature loom on the bezel. Slightly odd choice there. So popping a link in the rather pleasant bracelet and we see a rather pleasant etched case back. Those circular dolphins, I do like that logo. Certainly better than a dolphin riding the back of a mermaid anyway. The usual spec sheet, sapphire, 300 meters and the Miota. Now the movement in this one is a 90S5. That is a no date variant of the 9015. Always nice to see a company who takes the time to spec the no date version. There's a lot of companies just remove the date wheel and you get that uh, ghost pull on the crown, but not so today. And pretty decent result from the Miota as per usual. This one running away in the winders for a week or so, coming in at minus three and a half per day. So a Japanese made 24 joule movement, Hax hand winds around 40 hour power reserve. They're pretty good ones, these. You need directional winding though, so you will occasionally feel and hear the, the rotor spinning in one direction only, but diver case, I think, suits these movements the best. It's not all that noticeable with the Benarus. And I must say, it wears very, very nicely indeed. 42 mil diameter, 22 mil lug width would normally be kind of pushing my upper limits. I normally prefer 40 and 20 mil lugs, but this thing just disappears on wrist very, very comfortably indeed. Carries its weight nicely across the head of the watch and the bracelet. Lovely smooth brushing throughout. And that little red triangle on the bezel just adds a touch of color. I do like the C3 Old Radium style loom, but a little bit of kind of vintage red on that bezel, I think, adds a little something. And that vintage style is evident again when you look at it from a little higher up for perspective. Seven inch wrist, as noted, I think this one. 42, definitely the sweet spot for me. 38 might look a little bit small. I'm not really into 45s and 47 myself, but if you are, knock yourself out one of these. It will certainly wear smaller than that dimension suggests if this 42 is anything to go by. And there it is outside in some natural light and you get to see that lovely domed sapphire crystal. Not cheap, those domed sapphire crystals, I assure you so. I guess that goes some way to justifying the 450 US dollar price tag on this one. But again, just a lovely looking watch. Wears very sweetly, nice curvature to the lugs as well. Definitely helping it conform to the wrist. Drilled lugs if you wanna swap it out for one of the, the two strap options. And I'll do just that for you. What do you think? Looks good on the Tropic, doesn't it? And it's a nice one as well. Benarus etched on the buckle there. Again, very much in keeping with the, the kind of vintage late 60s, early 70s style of the watch. And you probably already know where you stand about divers on leather straps, but the strap itself is a good one. Plenty of texture, nice and thick, some chunky stitching, genuine Italian leather, Benarus logo. We've got the swirl on the fastener and tiny little swirl etched into the brush buckle. Personally, I could have done with a bit of taper. I think it's a bit too 22, 22, a little bit too straight, but again, not bad to be chucked in as part of the package. I know what you're thinking. This all sounds pretty good so far. The price is decent for the specs. The case finishing is nice. Nice mixture of brushed and polished as noted. Love that piece of domed sapphire crystal. That's gotta be worth a few quid, as have all those extras, the couple of different straps and the nice watch roll. If you don't like this dial, there's a couple of others to choose from. And if you're not happy with 42, again, there's another couple of sizes to choose from. What's your problem, Jody? Well, I've got one minor and one major. Now the minor really is quite minor, but worth pointing out, I felt. Have a look at this random selection of dive watches from my collection. In particular, have a look at the bezels and specifically have a look at the Arabics. Have a look at the direction. 
the bottom of the arabics if you like all of them the bottom of the arabics pointed to the middle of the dial all four of these watches unlike the benarus the bottom of the arabics pointing away from the dial so they flipped them 180 degrees now that caught me a little off guard when i first peeled all the stickers off of this one i guess it's something you get used to it is just a little quirk but i thought worth pointing out nonetheless so that's the minor what then is the major well this is the third benarus moray that i've had come through the house prior to making this video the first one arrived in about november last year looked good i sized up the bracelet indeed this is the original bracelet gave the motor a crank and then popped it into the boxy winders started that watch check app running unfortunately it stopped after about three or four days now it shouldn't be doing that in a winder should it my best guess was that the rotor wasn't spinning freely it was getting some charge to the spring but not enough to keep the thing running i contacted ralph at benarus he apologized profusely sent me a second unit the second unit was dead on arrival he apologized profusely again sent me a third unit that he'd inspected himself and I returned the other two to him. Now, he is based in Germany. He was off to his Hong Kong factory with the two duffers. I'm sure to hit somebody over the head with them. So if you bought one of these and there was a problem, I have no doubt that the company would honor you. But the fact remains that I got sent two bad ones in a row, which does put a bit of a question mark over Benarus's quality control. Which is a bit of a shame because if it wasn't for that, this one would be getting two thumbs up, a firm two thumbs up, especially at the knockdown price of 365 US dollars. So if you are interested in one of these ones, probably at that reduced price, it's worth taking a risk on the basis that if there is an issue, Ralph will look after you but hopefully booted the factory workers up their arse in Hong Kong last week, so they're checking these ones properly before they leave the factory. But a compelling overall package, a watch that wears very nicely indeed, and I do love this Neo Retro styling. Stainless steel bezel, a little bit of Tudor black bay perhaps there with the stainless steel one and the, the little red triangle, and that dome sapphire crystal got to be worth a couple of points in my book. Just make sure you give it a good inspection before you peel off the stickers. So there you have it, the Benarus Mori. Certainly a quirky little watch if you like your micros from left field. Now, I'm not sure what the chances of getting two duffers on the bounce are, but I would say it is fairly minimal. Ralph certainly had no problem exchanging those two for a, a working model and as noted he's off to the factory now to see what went wrong. I'm not suggesting that you're going to get a duffer from Benarus in the post but if you do I'm sure they will, they will look after you as they looked after me. Leaving that to one side though, the watch I thought was really interesting. Wears well, uh, certainly plenty of, of meat to the thing for your 449 US dollars. 42 wore well on my seven inch wrist, but as noted 38 for guys and girls with slightly smaller wrists and a 47 for the big guys. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.